Right, good evening. Nice to see everybody. Right. Whoa, wow. Good, everybody's having fun. Hopefully we'll have a great hour or so. We're late already. We're like a train leaving Aberdeen Station, meant to leave at 8 o'clock. We're a few minutes late, so I guess we'll run on a wee bit. Um, but it's really good to see so many people here, lots of boys and girls here. I think a lot of you were at camp last week because your eyes are kind of staring straight forward. All the juniors didn't sleep very much last week, but hopefully you all had a good week. And for the adults that are here, maybe you are a parent or maybe you're just somebody that was interested to find out more about what happened last week. And uh, so it's great to see you. Some facts and figures, if I can get this to work. Here we are. We've had four camps this year. We've had 165 campers. We've had 72 leaders, including kitchen staff and Bible teachers at four camps. We've made 12 long coach journeys from the northeast of Scotland down to Fasclay and back. We hit 28 degrees, which I think is a record for a camp. It was pretty warm this summer. We've eaten 82 meals. We have drank, or well, we washed 9,717 cups. I didn't monitor every one, but I did some calculations. And every meal, everybody gets a drink. We've had 30 Bible lessons. We've had hundreds of people praying for the camp back here and all over the place. And I don't know, but I know there was a lot of lives changed this year at camp. So it's a really, it's a wonderful thing at the end of the, the two weeks of the summer camps, we were able to come here to Hebron and to sing lots of songs. Basically, we're going to transport you down to Fasclay House. If you've never been there, the house is in the middle of Perthshire, right in the middle of the photograph. And as you get closer to it, it's a beautiful setting where we can accommodate 100 people. Uh, juniors was full and it was a really great week. And we're going to go in the door tonight, through the front door, into the meeting room. And really what we're going to try and do tonight is kind of recreate a little bit of the evening talks at camp. So what we do every day, morning and night, is we sing praises to God. We learn parts of the Bible and we hear God's word taught. And that's what we're going to do a little bit of tonight. A wee bit of seniors and a wee bit of juniors. So... First one is, we're going to have some songs, that maybe more junior songs. Is he that believe it hath everlasting life? Now, I think all the junior songs are action songs. You have to take part in the actions. Now, if somebody beside you isn't doing the actions, at the end, just stay on your feet and point at them, and we'll get them up to the front. Okay. So we need everybody to do the actions. This one, lots of clapping, and then when we get to the middle, you stand up, you walk all around, and then you sit down. Okay, so let's try this one. He that believe it. juniors. Now that was a quiet one to get us started because of juniors. So this one is called Stand Up and Shout If You Love My Jesus. And if it's a capital letter like these ones, you sing it really loud. But then if it's a smaller words, you whisper it. And then the third verse is very confusing because you stand up when you're shouting and you sit down when you're whispering. So let's go back and explain this to the old folks. So we all stand up and we sing this verse really loud, because it's capital letters. We all sit down and we whisper this verse, because it's lowercase. But then the third verse, you're standing up, you're sitting down, you're standing up, you're sitting down, standing up, sitting down. And again, if somebody next to you is not doing it right, make, nobody put their hand up. I want to get somebody up to the front to help me. So let's try, stand up and shout if you love my Jesus. And what, I think the junior campers need to sing a bit louder, because I heard you on the, camp, on the Facebook and it was louder than this. So big singing.
Yeah, quickly, we don't have time. Come on, up you come, quickly, up on the stage. And this includes leaders. So the girls here, come on up, leaders. Helena, come on, all the leaders up, we need you. Nothing's happening until you're up here. Right, you guys come forward, come forward here. Come forward towards me, right? Hurry up, girl leaders from last week. Excellent. Leaders at the back. Because some of them aren't up yet, and we'll start naming them. Right, good. Right, we're going to sing one you guys know very well. And it is, I'm in right, out right, up right, down right, happy all the time. Right, so, it's an action song again. So, in right, out right, up right, down right, happy all the time. Since Jesus Christ came in and washed away my sin, I'm in right, out right, up right. And does it get faster? Good. Well, let's try this one and watch. Look out for people not doing the actions. Okay. Right, now, the next one, that was good, wasn't it? Right. Our next one is one, I think it was new last week, and it's this one. So, do you know the word? Do you want to sing it from the... Okay, let's, so we're going to teach, we're going to teach all the grown-ups this song. Do you know the words, or do you need to turn around and see the words? Now, one of the things I mentioned earlier that we do at camp is we learn bits of the Bible. And sometimes I think when we get older, we think it's hard to remember things. I often forget what my wife says 
And sometimes she said, I'm not listening. But I know that people were listening very carefully when they did the memory verses. And I was speaking to some people that were at camp last week, and they said that you guys, the juniors last week, did a great job learning three different Bible verses. So what I wanted to do tonight is do the memory verse. And how we're going to do it is we're going to put it up on the screen, and then everybody in the room is going to say it together, right? We'll say it maybe through, we'll say it, well, we'll say it once, not twice. And then we'll put the words off and we'll all say it again, and I'll decide if the grown-ups are as loud as the children. Now, there were a lot of grown-ups at camp last week, so the leaders will find out if they were learning. And some of the senior campers are wondering, will they have to do the memory verse? And they will in a little while. So, what did the junior ones do? Let me see. They learned three verses. They learned John chapter 10, verse 9. Then they learned John chapter 10, verse 11. And then they learned John chapter 10, verse 28. So let's go back. And all together we'll say John chapter 10, verse 9. So after three, one, two, three. I am the door. By me, if any man enter in, he shall be saved. John chapter 10, verse 9. Let's try it again. Well done. Let's try the next one. Every say it together. I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd gives his life for the sheep. John chapter 10, verse 11. Let me just go back till I blank it out. Good. Go after three. Three. Third one. Okay, back now. It's the longest one. Think we'll manage it. Let's say after three. One, two, three. And I give them eternal life, and they shall never perish. Neither shall anyone snatch them out of my hand. John chapter 10, verse 28. We'll go for it. Right, these are very important verses. Now, I would like everybody to stand up. Everybody up on your feet. Everybody up on your feet. Good. Now, some people will get to stand, sit down when I say, so if I, if I say something and it doesn't apply to you, you can sit down. So if I, if I was to say, are you a boy, then the girls would be able to sit down. That's a practice, so up you get. Right, okay, so the question is, are you 40 today? Is this your birthday? Are you 40? Sit down if you're not 40 today. Oh! We've got one, right. So up you come. Right there. Come here. Keep clapping. Right, so Mikey's going to sing to us one of his favourite songs. No. Mikey's been going to camp since he was a little boy, and he comes and he helps every year, and he was, he's 40. I'm actually older than him, you might not believe that, but 40, so we've got to sing Happy Birthday, the band's going to play. an awful lot younger than you. Right, where's my words going again? I'm not doing a good job of this. It's gone all blank. All right. Hi, Stuart. Glad to see you're here. Stuart's been editing the camp film for tonight, so at least we're going to have hopefully a wee film that we have. Right. Is it working now? There we are. Right. So that's some songs from juniors. We're going to sing some songs from seniors. And the first one is one that we always sing at senior camp. It's called the CYC Medley. 
and it's three great old hymns all kind of mashed together um, and we're going to stand after the introduction we're going to sing this hymn together seat. What we're going to do now is we're going to pray and we're going to give God thanks for the junior camp and just pray a blessing on all the campers who were there last week. Let's just pray. Our God and our Father, we come before you at the beginning of this time together and we've seen all these boys and girls from the junior camp up on the stage and we're just so pleased that uh, they were able to spend a week down at Faskley last week. We give thanks for the friendships that were formed. We give thanks for the care that was over them. We pray that these friendships will last for a lifetime. We, some of us who are older remember meeting other youngsters when we were that age and friendships have lasted a lifetime. But more than that, Father, we just pray that what they were taught from the Bible, the verses that they learned and the truths that they were taught in the Bible lessons would have a real impact in their lives. We give thanks for all the leaders who were there last week and all those who made it possible who support the work of camp. But we really do just bring all these boys and girls before you and commit their futures to you. We know that we live in a, in a dangerous and a difficult world in many ways, and yet the opportunity ahead of these boys and girls to commit their lives to the Lord Jesus, to set the course of their lives, to follow him and have a sure uh, life and a sure eternity is, is so wonderful. So we just give thanks for the junior camp. We pray for them all. We pray that they be kept safe over the winter months when they go back to school in a few weeks' time. And we just pray that you would bless each of the families that were represented. We ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. Now, another song we're going to sing, a slightly newer one. What love could remember, no wrongs we have done. Omniscient, all-knowing, he counts not there. So I'm a lovely hymn. Um, and uh, again, I think we'll stand to sing this one after the introduction. Apologies, I'm not pointing this in the right direction. So sometimes the hymns aren't coming up at the right time. But let's stand again and sing this one after the introduction.
one of the uh, highlights um, of camp is the singing, and um, I think a lot of the new hymns that we sing in our church um, are first introduced at camp, and it's great to do that. And one of the things that's been nice in the last few years is when some of the older hymns have maybe been changed a little bit, maybe a new tune or a, a new bit added to it, and it really, sometimes it just adds to the wonderful truths of these old hymns. So our next one's a bit like that, um, if it comes up on the screen. I've taken my hands off the button, so anything from now on is not my fault. <laughs> um, so here is Love Vast as the Ocean. Maybe you recognize this one. It's a, a hymn that was written long ago, but if you jump onto the next, what the, the, uh, the bridge, as it's called, I think. Is that right, Mark? It's a bridge. It used to be a chorus. Now it's a bridge. Uh, and so can you, can, you, can you play through just the bridge bit, or is it we'll, we'll manage just to sing it? We'll just manage. Good. Good. Just follow me. singing. Right, stand up everybody. Up on your feet. Can't be you again, Mikey, can it? Right, sit down. If you're not called, Joe Paul. <laughs> up you come. Now, usually if, if, you're going to, if you're going to interview somebody, you give them a bit of notice and they always say no, especially seniors. I'm not going to interview you, don't worry. But, come you come. Joe Paul was at seniors with me. Oh. So what we're going to do is we're going to do the senior memory verse. Now, you did it really well. Yeah? You learned it all? Yeah? Good. And uh, look at these boys laughing. They think by you being at the front, you're in the spotlight. But I don't think it's going to work out like that. So what we're going to do, we're going to put up 
the memory verse, and we're all going to say it. Now, remember the, the juniors. In fact, could you move it on one for me? I think it should come up. In fact, we'll come back to that. Hem. Keep going. Keep, we'll, we'll go this way. Here we are. Right. So look what they learned. Now, this is what Jordan does. He makes it look hard because he just jams it all together. It's actually only four verses, 11, 12, 13, 14. Um, so the juniors, you did it word perfect, okay? And um, the seniors actually did it really well. I thought they did it pretty well last week as well, right, two weeks ago. So what's going to happen is we're all going to say it together, and then we're going to put the words off, and then we're going to say it again. And your job and my job is to see if any of the senior campers make any mistakes, okay? If any of them stop saying it, okay? And then we'll have a wee chat, and we'll decide what to do next, okay? So let's say it, because everybody said it. Even there was people related to me who came up to me outside and said, I said the memory verse, and they were so pleased because everybody did a really good job of learning this. So let's say it after three from the top. One, two, three. For the grace of God has appeared. Bringing salvation for all people, us to renounce ungodliness and worldly passions, and to live self-controlled, upright, and godly lives in the present age, waiting for our blessed hope, the appearing of the glory of our great God and Savior Jesus Christ, who gave Himself for us to redeem us from all lawlessness and to purify for himself a people for his own possession who are zealous for good works. Titus chapter 2, verse 11 to 14. Right. Let's try again. Words away. For the Right, so Joe Paul also was best camper. There you go. Two things. I think, to be fair, I think maybe you there was boys and their, mo their mouths moved all the way through it. It was really good. Um, but, but no, you did. You did a really good job uh, learning that last week. Now we're going to sing another song. Uh, we'll go back the way. Um, that's it. Facing a task and finished.
Now, we're going to ask Dougie to come up now. Not much of an introduction for him. Um, and he's going to give us a short Bible lesson. Um, we are running a bit late, if you remember. We're hoping to finish at nine, but it'll be a wee bit after nine. So Dougie will speak, and then we're going to have uh, another hymn later on, and then there's refreshments and all that. But over to you. Everyone here? Sandy, we're here. Can you still hear me okay? Right, okay, so let's play a quick game to spot the difference. Uh, here's two passports up on the screen. Uh, what's the difference between them, two years particularly? Yeah? Um, one's blue and one's red. One's blue, one's red, that's right. And every spot the difference, there's always an easy one to get you going to. Right, so there's a blue one and a red one, okay? Yeah? One says European Union, one doesn't, okay. Anything else? Any other differences? Yeah. One is older and one is new. Oh, interestingly, that one does look older, doesn't it? I think that's just the quality of the photo the way it's been done. But yeah, one does look older, one's new, yeah. One has a bolder font than the original. One's got a bolder font, so there's a different kind of font. Um, any, any other last ones? That's right, this one's got a little box, and this one doesn't. So, these are both uh, British passports, and what I saw, so everyone has heard lots about Brexit, and they tell me that this is, I know for a fact, this is what our passports look like now, and in the event of Brexit leaving the European Union, this is what our passports will look like in the future. But they'll still be the same, they'll still tell us the same sorts of things in many ways. So what sort of things does our passport tell us? Anyone? Yeah? Where would we be to? Where would we be to? That's right. It was easy. Go get some heavy stamps in the old. Certainly used to get stamps. Who you are. Who you are. That's right. So we get, uh, uh, we'll get a na uh, well, our nationality. That's what we've got. Uh, who we are. I cannot control the order. So we'll have to go with that. So we've got nationality. We've got who you are. We've got the country of birth. Uh, what else? What other thing might have to do with your birth? Yes. The date of birth, that's right, I know that one's there. Brilliant, okay. And might not have anything else. Anyone else? Maybe from the wings. So we've got name, nationality, country of birth, date of birth. Any other key bit of detail yet? A picture of you. They'll have a photo of you, yeah. And my one, see, uh, I was going to put mine up, but I'm not bother with that. <laughs> okay, so uh, a passport can reveal a lot about a person. Particularly, it reveals what we call their citizenship, what country they belong to. Um, and if children, I guess, from another country, if they're adopted by a family, if they go to legally live with that family and they become uh, their parents, then they become a citizen of their adopted parents' country. And they receive a new passport uh, and then they learn the language of their, their parents and then they maybe even grow up eating the food that's popular in their new country. Well, the Bible teaches us that once a person becomes a Christian, once he or she becomes a Christian, they become a citizen of heaven. That's the language that the Bible uses. A citizen of heaven. We take on the citizenship that belongs to our heavenly father. And so it changes the way that we live. And so whether you were at junior camp, senior camp, whether you were at the weekend, whether you were at the summer, you will have heard clearly that you and I, all of humanity, need a rescuer. And that God the Father has sent that rescuer. He has provided a saviour. And that God the Son, Jesus, has accomplished that rescue for us. He has made a way that we could be saved. And that God the Holy Spirit applies that to us. And it's a free gift to us. It's a free gift. But it's a gift that cost Jesus his life as he was nailed to a cross and died. And so having heard that this summer, having maybe heard it in church, the question that kind of I was thinking was, so, so if, if we've been redeemed, we've sang tonight senior songs, have bigger words in it to talk about being redeemed, so if we've been redeemed, that is rescued by Jesus, by Jesus paying the price for our sins. So if we're redeemed by grace, so it's a free gift, nothing that we could do, through Christ alone, must we still 
do good works and obey good uh, obey God's word. And it was amazing actually. I had no idea what the seniors had been doing on their camp. So it was amazing actually to see that you were in Titus too. The very command to obey and live upright lives. So having been saved, then we obey God's command. We live God's way. The answer from the Bible is a massive yes. Citizens of heaven, so if you're a Christian, you're a citizen of heaven, and we glorify God, we point to God by our example, whether it's our words or whether it's our actions, and we show the world, we show a watching world, so the people in our class, the people at home, uh, the people in our groups, the people uh, in teams that we maybe play for, we show them what God's like by living uh, that way. I'm going to play a quick game. Most of you have gotten a heads up on this just now. Uh, Stephen, it does just do bizarre things, doesn't it? Okay, so we're going to play a game of Who Am I? So you should have all received a post-it note, or children specifically. Is any, do any of the young people not have a post-it note? Quickly put, your, quickly put your hands up. Most of the young people should have post-it notes. And what I want you to do... So here's the deal. What I want you to do, given the pens that I've written, I want you to write, don't show your friends right now, I want you to write someone famous on that post-it note. Don't show your friends who it is. Just write someone famous. Can you do that for me just now? Okay. Do not let your friend next to you see who it is. Don't think too hard about it. It does not need it. Okay, we all managed that. Does everyone have our name? The girls have got them, the girls have got friends. If you, um, that's a need everyone can do, so if you don't get to do it or you don't want to do it, don't worry. So has everyone got our name? Put your hand up if you've got a name. Let's get a quick feel for it. <coughs> then when you've got a name and when your friend's got a name, what I want you to do is you take a name in the euro, don't let your friend see it, and I want you to stick it on their head. Okay? And then, friend, I want you to stick it on their head. So that you should be now like this, but you can't see. And now, you have two minutes to find out who you are, only asking yes, no questions. Okay? So you can ask a question, but it can only be a yes, no answer. So give her two minutes. Hand up, let's see. All right, I heard a yes and a high five. Oh, that is major success in row three. Are you not leaders? <laughs> All right, 15 seconds. Okay, you can finish that off later or take it home with you. So you're trying to work out what your identity was there. Who am I? You were asking questions. Am I alive? Am I dead? Am I from Britain? Am I, uh, am I a boy? Am I a girl? Am I a cartoon character? All these different questions. The Bible clearly declares who Christians are and what their identity is. Let's read from 1 Peter. So Peter's letter, chapter 2, verses 9 to 12. We'll read it together. It says, 
But you are a chosen race, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a people for his own possession, that you may proclaim the excellencies of him who called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. Once you were not a people, but now you are God's people. Once you had not received mercy, but now you have received mercy. Beloved, I urge you as sojourners and exiles to abstain from the passions of the flesh, which wage war against your soul. Keep your conduct among the Gentiles honorable, so that when they speak against you as evildoers, they may see your good deeds and glorify God on the day of visitation. So this is Peter writing to a group of Christians to remind them of who they are and what God has called them to do. Remember a few minutes ago when you had that label stuck on your head and you needed help figuring out who you were. That's what Peter's doing in this passage here. He's trying to help some Christians understand who they are. Have a quick scan of the passage again and see if you can find different ways that Peter describes who Christians are. 30 seconds, see with the person next to you if you can find some keywords that describe the identity of a Christian. All right, see if you can do it just for 30 seconds. Chat to them if you like. I see some words. Okay. So remember what we said earlier. When someone becomes a Christian, he or she becomes a citizen of heaven. And although Christians live here on earth for a time, their real home is with God in heaven. And that's why Peter calls us sojourners. See verse 11? That's a strange word, sojourners. We don't, someone doesn't go on a sojourning holiday in the summer, they go on a camping holiday. But it kind of means the same thing. It's not your permanent residence. Peter says that they are members of a chosen race, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a people for God's own possession. Let's look at them again. So we see here, Peter, uh, he says, but you are a chosen people. You see, God has chosen people to become members of his family. Isn't that amazing? That God would choose people to become members of his family, citizens of heaven, and he wants to spend forever with them. Christians are God's possessions. He, he bought them with the blood of his precious son. We're a royal priesthood. Christians have direct access to God and have been called to serve others for God's glory. And then it says that we're holy, a holy nation. Christians are set aside, set apart, set to be different by God. To be sanctified the word, is a word um, that describes it, but it means Christians are a group of people who are being made more like Jesus. And so God gives his people an identity and he gives them a purpose in life. He says, as citizens of heaven, God wants Christians to live in a new way and a way of their, the way of their father, their heavenly father, their adopted father and their heavenly country. And he wants the whole world to know who he is, he wants to know about him, and he wants to know about Jesus. And his plan has always been to use Christians to look at this job. It says in here, we see it here, um, that, I've lost it on the big screen, so maybe just quickly jump back over here, uh, that you may declare the praises of him who calls you out of darkness into this marvelous light or his wonderful light. There we go up the top. Um, that you may proclaim the excellencies of him who called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. You see, when the Christian does good works and we obey God's word, we're acting like citizens of heaven. We're acting like citizens of heaven and we're showing people what our adopted father, our adopted heavenly father is like. And so we hope our life would make them want to come and join God's family. So when we go back to school 
uh, when we have our classmates alongside us or when we're back in the family. We are living lives obedient to God, listening to his word, doing the things that God says in terms of being patient and persevering, being truthful, being kind, being generous, so that when the world looks on, they say, that is, a, that is someplace, that is a family that I would want to be part of. The thing is, doing good and obeying God's word won't make someone a Christian. It won't make them right with God. But instead, Christians do good and they do the right thing and they obey God's word as a response. So it's like when, maybe I'm the only parent that experiences this, but you know when, when, the chi- when your child first receives a gift, when they first get that gift, they come alongside you and they're like, oh, thank you so much. Oh, I love you so much. And then they want to tidy their room or they want to do other things. But it's just that moment of gratitude. They recognize what's been given to them and they want to do something. Well, it's the same for us as Christians. We recognize what God has done for us and we want to live a life that pleases him in response. Imagine being given a job by someone really important. How excited would you be? What kind of jobs do you think important people, can you think of an important person who gives people jobs to do? Let me rephrase the question like this. How excited would you be if your brother or sister gave you a job to do? How excited would you be if the queen gave you a job to do? Someone's face just lit up. I'm not going to say who it was. It might be their birthday today. <laughs> okay. But imagine an important job. The job that God has given us is that we are to proclaim, we are to speak of his excellencies. We are to tell the world what he's like who Jesus is and what God's rescue plan is and how great God is. That's the job Christians have been given. I wonder if you think, uh, do you guys think Christians are a good witness in the world today? Do we do a good job of that? I'm not sure. I think we, it is a, an exciting job. Becoming a, becoming a citizen of heaven is the most wonderful thing that could ever happen to anyone ever. And serving God is the most amazing privilege. And it's, but it can be quite easy to forget that, can't it? This is a photo from today. It's a live photo. Can anyone, older people as well, can anyone tell me where this is? Does anyone recognize what's going on here? Yep. It's the Grand Prix, that's right, yep. Hungarian Grand Prix, that's right. It's tricky, but does anyone recognize anyone in this picture? Anyone? Yeah. Martin Blondell, yes, good. Wasn't who I was going for, but you're absolutely spot on. So this guy here in the cap at the back is my friend Andy, okay? Now, Andy has, is a very clever guy, okay? He's just recently developed a bit of software that everyone's going nuts for. Microsoft, Unilever, all these things. And he's speaking to all these thousands of people about how amazing and how much, how powerful his bit of kit can do. And as a result, here he is in the pits at the Hungarian Grand Prix keeping them right in terms of tech and in in terms of sensors and what it all means and what have you. And I was just like, wow, isn't that amazing? And you know, when I saw the photo, for a split second, I was like, wish I was Andy. I wish his life is so exciting. He gets to go and do all these things. He gets to go to all these cool places. He gets to be in the pits at the Hungarian Grand Prix. He's paused, he's paused live on Sky so that you can say, that's Andy. I've never been paused live on Sky so that someone can say, that's Dougie. But you know what? I love Andy. He's doing a great job, okay? But it's suddenly, in God's goodness, he reminded me suddenly 
that my day of being at church in the morning, working through the afternoon, helping get ready for our holiday club tomorrow, meeting this afternoon, being back at church tonight, coming to speak to you guys about the excellencies of God. Oh, that me getting the opportunity to proclaim, oh, what is it doing? To proclaim the excellencies of God to an onlooking world is way, way, way more exciting than being paused live on Sky. Way, way, way bigger privilege than getting to work for Microsoft. Now, these are good jobs and they're a good gift from God, but actually, the most amazing gift and the most amazing privilege is to serve God and tell other people about him. And so how thankful we should be for the opportunity that God gives us as we head back from camp to tell people, hey, I heard amazing news this summer about a glorious Savior, a God that you can know. His name is Jesus. And so um, my prayer for you guys is that it would excite you, that it would thrill you, but that you would trust God, trust his word, obey his word, and be excited by the privilege that it is to be a citizen of heaven walking on earth with the job of, it's coming, there we go, to remind you. So we'll say it together just as we finish. Peter says that if you're a Christian, you are part of a chosen race, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a people for his own possession, that you may proclaim the excellencies of him who called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. Let me pray for us just as I finish. Father God, thank you for the goodness that you have shown to us, that we might know you. And thank you that you have provided a rescuer for us, Jesus. Jesus, thank you that you uh, were obedient to uh, death, even death on a cross. And thank you that the Holy Spirit applies that truth to our hearts, lifts the veil of unbelief. You're, the, the light of the glory of God is shone into our hearts so that we can know you. And I pray that the, the boys and girls, young and old, uh, who've heard of you, Jesus, this summer, and um, that that word would take root in their heart, um, that it would go deep, and it would grow up to bear fruit in their lives. Uh, guard them, protect them, uh, keep them uh, daily uh, as they grow. And we ask these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Stephen. Um, so let's sing this hymn, and then I'll close in prayer. We prayed for the juniors earlier on. I pray for the seniors. And, and pray for God's blessing.
Let's just pray. Our God and Father, we give thanks for this time we spent together this evening. We thank you for reminding us of the importance of knowing our real citizenship and our real sense of belonging. And we pray that what Dougie has shared with us tonight from your word would, would strike a chord and that the Holy Spirit would work in the hearts of some here tonight. We have prayed for the juniors already. We pray for them again. We commit them to you, these young lives. Um, at their schools and in their families. We think especially of the senior campers who um, are at secondary school facing so many different um, challenges and even attacks on what the Bible says. We recognize that young people now at secondary school face things that my generation never had to face. And we just pray that maybe from being at camp this summer and hearing the, the clear teaching of the Word of God that they would have really committed their lives uh, to their Savior 100%. We give thanks for hearing about children who became Christians at camp this summer. We pray for others who maybe are thinking of being baptized or becoming a member of a church. And we just pray that you would continue to work in their lives. We give thanks for all the many leaders and helpers who gave up their holidays to go to camp. We give thanks for all the people that prayed for camp and have given financially to support this work. We just pray as we go into a new year, into 2020, that if it be your will, Lord, that we would be able to have more Christian youth camps from the northeast of Scotland. We pray now for the food that's been prepared. We give thanks for it. We just pray a blessing on it. We give thanks for those who have uh, made the effort to, to feed us this evening and to give us refreshments. And we ask all these things in the name of the Lord Jesus. Amen.